Happy 4th of July, everyone. My name is Holden Hardman. Thank you so much for joining us again for another video. Today, we're watching Saving Private Ryan. This one has been on our docket for quite a while now. We've been wanting to release this on the 4th of July ever since, I think, 2022. Uh, we didn't get to it last year, but we wanted to make sure we get to it this year. So currently, we're filming a big backlog. By the time this comes out, our baby will have been born. So we will not be actively making videos while we're in that you know, several week phase after the baby's born. So this is part of our backlog. So you guys consistently get content while we're spending time with our baby. So right now, Jen is still pregnant. By the time you're seeing this, my son will be here on Earth. I am really excited to watch this one. This is Steven Spielberg. It has been a while since I've seen it, but like many of you that probably haven't seen this, maybe in a couple years as well, there are certain scenes that just stick in your mind. And for me, there are a handful that I just don't ever forget after seeing this. Fourth of July, it's a big day in uh, our American culture, very American, so we figure we might as well watch a very American movie. So I'm excited to get into this one. Jen, who is, by the way, an Army veteran. A lot of people don't know that or don't realize that. Jen was in the Army for six years, maybe a smidge longer than that. So give it up for Jen, Army veteran. Meanwhile, I was uh, not. <laughs> so thank you for your service, sweetie. We love you very much. How are you feeling going into Saving Private Ryan? I'm actually pretty ashamed that I have not seen this movie, namely because I was in the military, but B, just because I know that everybody has seen this movie, or that's what it feels like to me. I did not know it was Steven Spielberg. He has a good track record, so I'm really excited to see how this is gonna go. I know everybody thinks that I only care about like animals dying, but that's not true. Oh boy. <laughs> but um, in particular, it's really difficult for me to watch soldiers dying in movies. And being pregnant, I'm a little concerned. This is like almost a three hour movie. And so I'm imagining three hours of just seeing like soldiers being maimed and killed. So that's a little daunting to me. I'm excited to check it out. And I think for me, it's a mandatory movie. I have to see what this movie is about. My prediction is that it's gonna be a lot of action. It's gonna be an emotional movie. So I'm really excited. I hope it's gonna be a uh, memorable movie and um, we'll have to check it out. Yeah, Spielberg has a very strong heart for World War II stuff, him being Jewish. You know, we saw bits and pieces of Schindler's List. That's one we, we will hopefully do on the channel down the line. But we have started it kind of on our own time. We, never, we didn't end up finishing it. So Steven Spielberg loves World War II in the sense that he loves the storytelling of it. Not that he's like, I'm so glad this happened. You know what I'm talking about. He is probably the best war director. Yeah, this, this might be tough. There have been some pretty good war movies since this. Uh, but he's definitely up there. Between Saving Private Ryan and Schindler's List, I mean, pretty dang good. He did a movie, actually you would probably like, called War Horse, which is about a horse during uh, the war, but uh, nobody ever talks about that movie. Forgot everything about it, based on a true story. Anyways, uh, before we get into Saving Private Ryan, let's not forget the comment of the day. Today's comment of the day comes from when we watched Jaws, which, as you know, is Steven Spielberg, and the movie took place on the 4th of July. I thought that would be a fun one. From David Probus, who says, yep, actual shark footage was used. I love this movie so much. Our local theater does flashback cinema, and one year they played the movie on July 4th. It was cool watching it during the dates of the on-screen event. I really want to go to one of those showings where you watch it in the water. That would add so much for the experience. It sounds like a ton of fun, fantastic movie. Very true. So we live in, uh, in the Pensacola area here in Florida, so we're like right on the beach. And there have been times where they've done screenings of Jaws with the screen facing out to the water. So you have to go out in the water and you watch it. Really cool. I've never done it, but I would love to do that. And our second comment of the day comes from David Curfew. This is when we watched uh, War for the Planet of the Apes, who says, The soldier that shot Caesar with the crossbow kind of reminds me of Saving Private Ryan. Oh, actually, I actually can't read that one. Sorry, David. There's a spoiler in there. I can't read that one out. So our actual comment of the day will come from Alejandro Rodriguez, who says, this movie tells me you need to show Jen some heavy hitters like Schindler's List, Saving Private Ryan, or Green Mile. Fun fact, I have not seen Green Mile. I do know an awful lot about it, but that might be one that I could watch in the future. Have you seen Green Mile? No. Oh, maybe that's one we could both watch in the future. Thank you guys so much for leaving your comments. If you want your comment featured in a comment of the day, leave us a comment down below. We'll check those out. Keep us in your thoughts while we are now taking care of our baby by the time you're watching this. As of filming this, we're very, very excited. We got everything set up and we're really anxious. And by the time this comes out, you know, we'll be in that, that phase of trying to take care of him. So very excited. So keep us in your thoughts and prayers, everyone. For now, let's go ahead and get into it. Saving Private Ryan. Oh, Oscar five times yeah. winner. Five time Oscar winner. I think this one best picture, I think. Okay, well, tell me, watch party. 
No, that's if you want to watch with people at the same time. I know. I'm just saying maybe we should look into that in the future. For the channel? Yeah. Well, that would be cool. Soldiers in particular die on screen is really emotionally draining for me. Well, it's a good thing we're watching this while you're pregnant, I guess. <laughs> oh, sometimes you can just tell by the opening note. Right. You know, that it's, it's, it's like the, <laughs> that you're the, about to be destroyed yeah, it's like emotionally. The, the trumpet, you know. Who's, who's in this movie? Uh, Matt Damon, Tom Hanks. Oh. Oh, Tom Hanks is in this movie? Oh, yeah, your oh, boy Tommy crap. Hanks. Yeah, it's going to be a rough one. It's going to be an emotional one. The only other actor that I've cried more movies at, and I'm not a crier for movies, is uh, Will Smith. Oh, yeah, he's uh, struggling with that reputation right now. But I know what you mean. By the way, shout out to our non-American fans. Our analytics show that about half of our viewers are American. Shout out to our Canadians, the British. Sorry about the war. Actually, not really. We're American. Uh, shout out to Australia. We love you guys. India. Oh, India. Oh yeah, we got a lot of India viewers. Oh, he's got his little airborne. Yeah. Oh. Glad we were able to bury the hatchet. Britain, you know. Hold on. We love you guys. We love the movies. Harry Potter, you know, love that. What year did this come out? 1998. Oh, this guy's a good actor. Yeah. Oh, man. I love Tom Hanks. Me too. Uh. Oh, jeez. Oh. Oh, gosh. Oh, my goodness. Oof. Oh, jeez. Wow. Oh, my gosh. Water's just blood. Yeah. Oh. Good God. Oh. Oh, man. Oh. Oh. Dude, put your. Oh, that's Giovanni Rabisi. Yeah, from Friends. I mean, just the level of courage you have to have to be like where. Mm -hmm. To just be like pushing forward, you know, like this. Mm -hmm. Was that Vin Diesel? That yeah, that's oh, that Vin is Vin Diesel. Diesel. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Let him burn. Jeez. Yeah. No, Recognize him too. He was in Friends. Full information. Mrs. Jones, the untimely death of your son. No oh. words of mine can ever relieve me. Brian Cranston. Wow. Sean Ryan. I've just learned that this afternoon their mother's going to be getting all three telegrams. Oh my goodness, this is terrible. Yeah, she already knows. Looks like somewhere where like Superman grew up. Oh, gosh. Oh my God. Assuming Private Ryan even survived the jump, he could be anywhere. It was a tough assignment, that's why you got it. Yes, sir. I've got another one for you. Yes, sir. This one's straight from the top. You smart ass. Now listen up. You liked up. it in the ass. <laughs> what? I thought you liked it in the ass. <laughs> I wonder how they did this shot back then. Those ships. Like way out there, yeah. I think it'd be like matte paintings or something. In Dunkirk, they used like cardboard cutouts of tanks. They were so far out you couldn't tell. Did you haven't touched me with those little rat claws again. <laughs> what the f 
Back in formation. Every time you salute the captain, you make him a target for the Germans. What do you know about brotherhood? Get a little of this guy, fish. I mean, where's the sense of risking the lives of the eight of us to save one guy? Anybody want to answer that? Think about the poor bastard's mother. We all have orders, and we have to follow, and that supersedes everything. Even if you think the mission's food bar, sir? Especially if you think the mission's food bar. Let's say you weren't a captain, or maybe I was a major. I say this is an excellent mission, sir, with an extremely valuable objective. I'm willing to lay down my life and the lives of my men, especially you, Ryben. <laughs> Is that what's Run his out. face? Paul Giamatti. Yeah. Forcing two regiments. Statue of Liberty is kaput. That's disconcerting. <laughs> Your father was circumcised by my rabbi, you prick! <laughs> you gotta pay attention to detail. I know exactly where it's from and exactly what he did for that. Ugh, they used to say that on basic training all the time. Attention to detail. Man, I get it though. Like, I can't do a life near my knees, sir. Kapoor's a kid, the kid, not here to do the decent thing. We're here to follow the order. Yeah, that, I mean, oh, gosh. Oh, my God. No, no, no. He was on the ground while we were the shot. Yeah, I mean, he's far away. Let not my enemies try and pull me. Oh my gosh. Oh yeah. We got him. Oh. That's why we can't take children. Men will form up in the northwest corner of the square. Check the tower, hustle back here. Right. Inside, you're out of my boot. Oh, oh my god. god. That could have been bad. We're here looking for a private James Ryan. He's part of your outfit. That bazooka to the right side of the road. Yes, sir. You get Ryan up here. I recognize that guy. I think he's from uh, mm -hmm. the good place. Oh, it's uh, Nathan Fillion. Sir, Private Ryan recording is ordered. At ease. Private, I'm afraid I have some bad news for you. Your brothers are dead. Oh, my God. My brothers are dead. How, how did they die? They were killed in action. My brother's still in grammar school. James Frederick Ryan, Minnesota. Minnesota. You mean my brothers are okay? Yeah, I'm sure they're fine. Ugh. Are you sure that they're okay? So when the hell's our Ryan? Jeez, are you and crackers. I'm sure as hell could use you around here, but I understand what you're doing. Find them. Get them home. He got shot in the foot once, didn't he? He was walking with his hands. Do you know how many men I've lost under my command? How many? 94. But that means I've saved the lives of 10 times that many, doesn't it? So you rationalize making the choice. This Ryan better be worth it. The truth is I wouldn't trade 10 Ryans for one Vecchio or one Caparzo. Well, does sleep like that? <laughs> I mean, look at him. The trick to falling asleep is trying to stay awake. I would lie in my bed and try to stay awake as long as I could, but it never worked. The harder I tried, the faster I'd fall asleep. She just wanted to find out about my day. If she came home early, and I still wouldn't move. I'd still pretend to just be asleep. I don't know why I did that. Captain. Recognize him, too. Hey, Captain. Mm -hmm. Check out that squad. See if Ryan's in it. Yes, sir. Juden. <laughs> I'm Juden, you know? Yeah, look at the food bar in the German dictionary. There's no food bar in there. Uh, bum. Yes, sir. Come on. Come on. Come on. We were the winky, that's a buddy of yours. Ryan. R I E N N E. That's three N and it's the tweet, I got the straight plug. I see enough goddamn airboat watching. Oh, he's embarrassed by that. Yeah, obviously. Private James Ryan from Iowa? Anybody know a Ryan? Was this based on a true story or inspired or anything? That's a good question. I I'll, I'll need to look it up. James Francis. Ryan. No, no, no. James Francis Ryan. Yeah, of course I know him, sir. Does he know where he is? Him, me, and a couple other guys were coming here to the rally point. 
Jeez. We advance and keep pressure on him until he has to change out his barrels. Oh. Oh, jeez. Oh no! Wait, you're fine. You're going on a hospital. How's it look? It's gonna be okay. It's gonna be okay. Put the pressure on him. What can we do, Wade? Tell us what to do. There you go. Mama, I wanna go home. I wanna go home. It's been me. It's been me. I gave you. I gave you. Please don't shoot. Him. I don't care what he says, Alvin. <laughs> now they can. Oh. Please, I like America. Oh, I say, can you see? Fuck Hitler. He surrendered, sir. Tell him. To march a thousand paces in that direction. The POW arriving. Can't take him with us. We can't. You just let the enemy go. Fall in. You gonna shoot me over, Ryan? No, I'm gonna shoot you because I don't like you. Sir, hey, shut do up. It. You don't know Pull how to shut up. Already. I'm a school teacher. Thomas Alva Edison High School. Sometimes I wonder if I've changed so much. My wife is even gonna recognize me whenever. That earns me the right to get back to my wife. Well, then that's my mission. Every man I kill, the farther away from home I feel. Who's doing a shoot? Oh. Mm. Oh. Company 501st. Ryan, first to 506. James Francis, Ryan. How'd you guess that? Hmm. We're here for him, Ryan. Your brothers were killed in combat. Which which ones? All of them. Uh, you, uh, you're going home. You're abandoning my post. I understand that, but this changes things. I don't see that it does, sir. About them. I mean, there's barely hardly hey, enough of us. Asshole. Two of our guys already died trying to find you. All right. Why? Why me? Why do I deserve to go? Why not any of these guys? They all fought just as hard as me. There's no way I'm leaving this bitch. You don't want to know what I think. No, Mike, I do. Part of me thinks the kid's right. Someday we might look back on this and decide that saving Private Ryan was the one decent thing we were able to pull out of this hole. We all earned the right to go home. Oh, brother. If we can make that tank a 60-ton roadblock, we do that. We got a fighting chance to get you up in that bell tower. So how do we stop the tank? We could hit the tank in the tracks. Sticky bomb, sir? Making that up? No, it's in the field, man. You coat the whole thing with axle grease. It should stick. You all right? Yeah. Hmm? Well, I got a heart on the size of the Statue of Liberty, right? <laughs> and she says to me, Richard, calm down. And she says, <laughs> Well, you don't just think about their faces, you think about something specific. Two of my brothers came and, and woke me up in the middle of the night with Alice, <laughs> Alice Jardine. You're a girl who just took a nosedive from the ugly tree and hit every branch coming down. <laughs> All of a sudden, John just screams out. Danny, you're a young man, <laughs> don't do it. <laughs> she goes running right into the wall and knocks herself out. And John's saying, what are you trying to hit me for? I just did you a favor. <laughs> Uh, that was the last night the four of us were together. These Tiger tanks, two of them. Panzer tanks, two of them. Up them! Hustle up! It's a ton of infantry, Captain. I don't know if they took the bait, though. Wow. Oh. 
Oh, gosh. Oh. Oh my goodness. Captain, thanks. Oh, jeez. Oh. Gosh. Oh. Look out, look out. Oh, my gosh. Oh. Throw it out. Come on, man. Oh. oh my gosh. Oh no. Oh man. Was that that guy? Or is it a different guy? Oh. <laughs> oh no. Huh. We can use them without the tools! How? Uh that's a lot of Germans. Oh, she got the wind knocked out of me. Get out of here. Father may assuage the anguish of your bereavement to have laid so costly a sacrifice upon the altar of freedom. I've tried to live my life the best I could. I hope that at least in your eyes I've earned what all of you have done for me. All right, just finished Saving Private Ryan. Uh, this movie is an absolute classic. It is just emotionally draining by the end of it. I think if you watch like how we were at the beginning, kind of getting ready for it, and then to now where it's just like, oh gosh, you know, so depleting. Uh, this movie has so many moments that I just remember like vividly in my mind. The opening D-Day scene at Omaha Beach uh, I've heard is like one of the most accurate uh, depictions of the storming of that beach, uh, just in the terms of like the way it was shot, 
just the chaos of it, to our ragtag group of soldiers that we kind of all get to know individually, like the sniper guy who's the super religious southern sniper dude, one of the Juden guy who is uh, who got stabbed. That's that whole scene, like in the upper room where the Nazi stabs him while uh, Corporal's in the staircase, like crying. Like it's so like emotionally depleting. The whole thing of them capturing the Nazi dude after they shoot their friend and like the shot, overhead shot of like all their hands coming over trying to, you know, put some pressure on his chest to keep him from bleeding out, failing. And then them arguing about whether to let him go, or whether not to let him go. Ended up letting him go and that's the guy who ended up shooting Tom Hanks' character. The shot where Tom Hanks is just like taking pot shots at the tank, you know. All those like incredibly vivid moments just, uh, just I think it's just a testament to how powerful this movie is, so, super fantastic. And then just the the philosophical issue of, do we really risk all of these lives in order to save this one? And then that's a weight that James Ryan has to carry at the end where he's like, uh, where Tom Hanks is like, earn it, you know, make sure that this was like, this was worth it. And he's asking his wife, I assume it was his wife anyway, tell me I've lived a good life. Tell me I've, you know, I've earned this. She's like, of course, you're a good man. Uh, so all really great moments. This is a, such a spectacular film. I think debatably the best war movie probably ever made. There may be some room for debate in that, but uh, it's certainly, an argument could certainly be made for it. Of course, I'm gushing about the movie, talking about how great it is. What did you think? I don't even know where to start with the movie. First off, exactly what I thought going into it, that it was gonna be emotionally draining. Very much so. It was, it was probably one of the most difficult movies to watch. I was very like laser focused on what was happening. There was so much death within this movie. But I think what makes this movie so good is that I think it's one of the best depictions or best war depictions as far as showing how ugly and raw war really is. This movie at times was uncomfortable, severely uncomfortable to watch, devastating. At times it was, there were funny moments, like when they were having conversations about home or just, you know, recalling moments from their, their life at home. Having a mixture of all those, really every possible emotion that you can think of is jarring, but it's in such a great way that it's it's appropriate i think that having this movie so raw and just disturbing is the only way to watch a movie like this because you really are not getting the full message unless you are uncomfortable disturbed sad and uh, they did a fantastic job at that especially that opening scene you know everything from the detail of seeing like the blood water just rush back and forth or the tide come back and forth. This movie did a good job at focusing on little details. For instance, Captain's hand. That's something that I noticed throughout the movie that really in the beginning, I didn't think it like meant that much, but as the movie goes on, it has so much symbolism and um, is really an important part of his character, I think. I also loved that this movie really stopped to focus on all our team members' death. So they wouldn't rush it and just move on to the next. They took the appropriate time. I, I love that. I love that they didn't just keep on going. I really enjoyed this movie overall. I can understand why people love it. Uh, I, do, I don't know if I could watch this again though. It was It was very, very, disturbing. Um, I will say one of my favorite things about this movie also is the situation of, you know, we have this POW and he killed our friend. Do we, do we shoot him? I mean, at the end of the day, that's what it is. Do we end his life? A life for a life. I think that naturally people would have an argument for both, but I think that's what makes this movie like in a nutshell, what makes it so good. I, I thought this movie was great. Visually, I thought it also was really, I don't even know what the correct word usage is, focusing on some of the, the things that you wouldn't think about. Um, for instance, I don't remember what the guy's name was, but the translator, focusing on a scene where he's sitting at the stairs 
and the enemy just walks by and how like how long that actual scene was um, I think was was great so overall I think that they just focus on things that you wouldn't normally focus on in some other war movies loved Giovanni Ribisi's character. I don't remember what his name was, but he was probably my favorite. Especially that moment when he was seeing the rest of his comrades like going through all the dog tags in front of the other soldiers. Um, I thought was such a great moment. Gave his character just so much depth and I really, really liked him a lot. Overall, I thought it was brilliant that they didn't just focus on like it's a war movie, and so we're gonna focus on our soldiers versus the enemy. Like, there were stories within stories within stories of this movie. Ryan was just another story, you know, that that was the goal to get him home, and that even that, there were like so many layers to it. Our captain, it became more than a mission for him, and I think that that's like the epitome of a soldier. And uh, so they depicted that very, very well. I enjoyed it. Hard to watch, hard to watch, but in a good way. And I think, I think everybody should uh, watch this movie. So I really enjoyed it. I thought it was a good time. What would you rate it? What would I rate it? Because it's probably one of the most depressing movies I've ever seen. But again, it's in a good way. The message is really strong and necessary. I don't really have any complaints about it. I think I'm gonna rate it a 9.5. Yeah. One thing I think this movie did really well, it's really hard to do, uh, is because it's, it's easy to just say, Americans are the good guys, the Nazis are the bad guys, and yip, you, woohoo. And that's usually the way that it kind of goes. But in this, I like that they show that war is ugly and horrific on both sides. That one side does not have a moral monopoly over the other. A lot of the cases, on the German side, these are just guys who are also enlisted, who have families, who aren't even bad, really. Obviously, I'm not saying the Nazis are good, but hopefully you hear what I'm saying. Just like on the American side, these are just guys who got enlisted into the war and they're fighting each other. There are a few times where uh, Tom Hanks' character even like points that out. There's a, one time where like one of the American soldiers falls down and gets shot multiple times. Like, why do they keep hitting him? And he's like, as long as there's, as long as there's breath in his lungs, the message could still go out. Tom Hanks' character is like, yeah, we do the same thing. And they're like, we wouldn't do that, no. But it shows that it's just like, in the horrors of war, everyone gets their hands dirty. And I think that this movie did that in a, in a really good, respectable way. It's the scene that you pointed out, where they're like, do we let this guy go or not? If we were captured by them, they would probably kill us too. So why don't, why don't we do the same thing, you know? At first it's like, well, I th they made the right choice. They're just like, you know what, we're better than this. They send him off, but that decision comes back to haunt them. So was it still the right decision? Tough stuff, and I think it was handled really, really well. For me, this movie is pretty dang close to perfect. This is a, a solid movie, emotionally draining, it certainly is. So I think I would give this movie probably a solid 10. This is a pretty dang perfect movie. Steven Spielberg at his best, and I, yeah, just absolutely great. But of course, these are just some of our thoughts. We'd love to know what you guys think down in the comments below. So leave us a comment down below. We'll check those out. If you did enjoy this video, leave it a like. It helps the channel out a lot. Subscribe, you'll be notified when we post the next video. Check out Patreon. You can watch videos just like this, ad-free until I post them early before anyone else. And you can watch the full, nearly three hour long, full movie reaction with Jen and I over there too, if you would like to watch the whole movie with us. But for now, that is it. Jen and I appreciate you watching. We'll catch you in the next video. Take care.